Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We love you guys. Hey, I am here joined by my wife, who is just an incredible mother, mother of mothers, Emily Bowers. Thanks, guys. And I'm joined by Megan, who's amazing. <laughs> Megan is on the Cross and Anchor team. <laughs> yeah. And we just want to say happy Mother's Day to all you moms. We are so beyond grateful for you. Yeah. And listen, like our lives wouldn't be the same. Our homes would not be what they are, would not be the places of strength and encouragement and blessing that they are. And like you are just so loved and we want to honor you today. Moms, we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Definitely. Whether you are a mom with kids right now or you are kind of standing in as a mom to someone, if you have kids in heaven, whatever that looks like, if you foster or you adopt or you're a single mom, wherever you're at on the spectrum, we love you. We champion you here at Cross Anchor. We honor you and um, we believe it's going to be a great day for you. That's right. Um, we, uh, we're tonight meeting in person at six o'clock and uh, we'd love to have you come if you are in the area, we have a gift for all you moms. So uh, if you are here tonight, we'd love to bless you with that. And um, there's so many exciting things happening in our church. Mm -hmm. Like, should I tell you about some of them? Yeah, you should take the mic. Should I tell them? Okay, I'll take the mic. We're sharing mics here, it's low budget here at Cross and Anchor. Um, so we, we have so many exciting things coming up, but first, we want to just say welcome to whoever is joining us today, wherever you're joining us from. We're so glad to have you. And in the comments is a connect card. So we would love to be able to get to know you a little bit better. You know, it's it's so awesome to have you watching, but we can't connect with you unless we know that you're here and unless you fill out one of the connect cards. So it doesn't take long. We're not going to pester you or harass you, but we would love to just say thank you for watching and joining. And if you would like to know more information about Cross and Anchor or get more involved, we'd love to be able to tell you about that as well. Um, but this is an exciting season in our church because we are coming back to in-person services um, and we're starting a brand new series next weekend. We are starting a new series. Meg, do you want to tell us about it? Yeah. So I had the opportunity of being able to help bring uh, the vision of like just Josh and Em's of just being able to like portray people. And I think it's going to be a great series of just being able to get back into what um, I've heard a little bit about like Genesis and like the image that we're made in. And it's just so super important to know that. And I, I'm just really excited to just really like, it's like my first real series that I've been able to just um, like just attend and I'm, or just about to be attending. And so to me, I'm just super stoked to be able to just be a part of that and just to watch like how much like this is gonna bring like, just like, I don't know, connection more to like who God is and like understanding like the image that you're made in. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so it starts next weekend and it's people. What does it mean to be human? And I'm excited about it. So what else? Well, um, if you, I, I think with what Meg was just saying, uh, so Meg is new to our team and she just moved to the Detroit area from Ohio. So what brought you to cross an anchor, Meg? Yeah. So to sum it up, I was, first off, I got a job in Detroit and um, I've just really, I started two years ago just praying over Cross and Anchor before it was like even a, I don't know, just even like to where it's at now. And it just started with prayer and God just kept on like putting Cross and Anchor in my heart to go out and just attend every now and then to like some of these like um, worship nights and then all of a sudden like Detroit was like there was a job opportunity and I was like I gotta get plugged in and it so started awesome. with just like you know what this was the first place that just came to my mind and so I just really um, getting plugged in was just super important to me and like if you're new or you you've been attending for a while like just come on out like come to a worship experience um, I don't know where we're going with this but like to me it was just super important to like get plugged in yeah and like Detroit's been amazing people have been amazing I love not only you two, but we have just an amazing team and just everyone is seriously just like, just so loving and so like true to who he is. That's awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you, Meg. Mm -hmm. And you're such a, like a great, like amazing addition to our team. And um, it wouldn't be the same without you. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, maybe you're watching and you're like, I, I've been thinking about getting involved or I've been looking for a place to connect. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to have you become a part of this. And uh, yeah. Just one more question for you. So like you talked about, you know, you, you moved here. Mm -hmm. So how has like Cross and Anchor been like a, 
uh, like a community for you? Yeah. Um, to me, it's been a family, like just being able to like get to know like not only the people that are just super involved with like we're going out to dinner, we're doing a lot of these like even just um, we're just trying to get like a game night going with a few of the nice. folks here. Um, and then as well, like just grabbing coffee. I like, think like coffee and like just bringing people. To, I don't know. The coffee world has brought a lot of this cross and anchor people together. And I don't know. I just love it. People like it's just a family, like obviously like some cool perks have come along with being able to be a part of this for four months, um, but uh, AJ, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's dating somebody, so we can't guarantee that that will happen for you, yeah, but I think I the chances are good, Yeah, I would say. I, I um, think so. <laughs> yeah, AJ, AJ, everybody. Only if you join the production team at works, all right? Just saying. Hey, if, if you're looking for a date, join the production team. Uh, this mean, definitely took a turn. It, so you go to church, you find your spouse. It's just <laughs> hey, there's not a better place to find a spouse. <laughs> um, so anyway, so glad uh, to have you, Meg and, and AJ. And um, we uh, are really excited, too, because we just that's my son in the background. Uh, we're, we're pretty chill today, but we are getting ready to just uh, announce a new line of merch. We gotta get that fresh swag for everyone, cause yes. repping repping <laughs> CNA. So that's coming out. Uh, Pre-orders are gonna start this weekend. Right now. Yeah. Right in this very moment, it's happening. Mm -hmm. So you can go on our website, and there's a tab that says merch, and uh, it's some pretty sweet stuff. So um, I would definitely recommend grabbing some, and it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, you guys are the first people to be able to get this stuff, and it's going to be available uh, very soon. So you can pre-order it today, and then we'll ship it to you as soon as it comes in, which will be in the next uh, you know week or so, a couple of weeks. And we're excited about that. One more thing before we go. Do you know what it is? Yeah, you on my edge of my seat right here. Listen, <laughs> um, one of our values at Cross and Anchor is that we are generous. Right. And so we believe that God gives us blessings so that then we can be a blessing. That's right. And so we don't consider our resources something to hold on to and like keep to ourselves, but to have an open hand so that those resources can then flow to other people. And that comes all throughout scripture. You see that. In fact, in Proverbs, it says the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And we want to be the first people. We want to be the generous people. God's given us so much, so we want to give back to him. And even this last weekend, um, we were able to give a, a really sizable donation to this ministry called God Behind Bars. Yeah. And they take the gospel into prisons all over the country. And they do so with people like Maverick City and other worship people, you know, pastors and stuff. And uh, they make a tremendous impact, like thousands of people giving their lives to Jesus. And so, We're anyway, about it. Um, get us wrong. <laughs> thank you for your generosity, and let's continue to be generous, mm -hmm. to watch what God's going to do, because I believe the best days are ahead yeah. for our church, for you, and the more that we are able to get behind that, the more we're able to do, the more people are able to reach, and the broader our influence becomes. Yeah. So, really, when we don't give, the only person we're robbing from is ourselves. Right. So, um, all the ways to give are on the screen. And we'd love to partner with you in that. I'll give my wife the last word because she's going to have the word tonight <laughs> in person at the service. I'm preaching online, but she's got the service in person. Anything you want to say, maybe a little like teaser blurb from your message that's going to be tonight. Oh. Wow, that's <clears throat> that's definitely putting me on the spot. Uh, tonight, we're actually talking about Zacchaeus, the the oh, wee little man. Nice. Yep. And I'm really excited about it. It's a... Uh, it's something that has been rolling around in my heart for a while. And uh, the message is all about, it's called, What Would You Do? And it's basically just, um, what are we willing to do to get to Jesus? Are we willing to do creative, desperate things to get to Jesus, things that don't make sense? And so, um, yeah, I'm uh, excited about it. And uh, I just believe that God wants to move every obstacle that we feel is in our way to do life with him. And so... Um, I'm excited about it and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to share. So I think it's going to be a good Sunday. Yeah. All right. All right. I said wee little man and I thought I had to get him. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually not very wee. He's very large <laughs> for his age. But uh, 
yeah, this is Jack and this is London and we're super excited to have them part of the journey with us. But moms, again, we love you a lot and uh, we honor you today. And we're going to say bye now. So enjoy this message from God's word and we love you so much. Hey everybody, so glad to have you with us this weekend. I just wonder as we get started today, is there anybody out there who can say, I have something to thank God for? Like, is there something that God has done in your life this week, this month, this year, that you just have to stop and say, God, thank you. I know for me, God has done so much in my life this year. Even in the hard times and the difficult times, he's been with me. He's seen me through it. He's grown me. He's helped change me and become more like Jesus in the process. He's provided for me. Uh, He's done miracles in my life and in this church. And I just wonder today if you can just give God some praise because he's always good. His timing is always perfect. There's not one moment that he doesn't stick by our side, even in the most difficult of times. And if you haven't seen him come through yet, you're going to see him come through because he's faithful. I just wonder if we can in the chat today stir up some faith and thank God for how good he's been to us. Don't keep it to yourself. Type it out. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, doesn't matter where you're at. Let's let our praise be loud even if it's digital. Let's throw up some praise hands. Let's type out some hallelujahs and let's not let our thanks go unsaid and our praise not be loud today. Hey, it's Mother's Day. Come on, all you moms out there, we love you so, so much. You guys are heroes. And I want to give a special shout out to my wife, the mother of our daughter and son, uh, just an amazing woman that I love dearly, Emily Bowers, and my mom, uh, Barbara Bowers, who will probably watch this today, or maybe you're joining right now. I love you so much. So thankful for you. Uh, so glad to be uh, just able to have the relationship that we have. And how, how about our moms? Aren't they just amazing? Can we just thank our moms today? Maybe even tag them uh, in this and just say, hey, mom, we love you. Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, I am excited for what's happening here tonight. So if you're wondering where we're at, this is actually where we're meeting now at Cross and Anchor. And this room is not completed yet. Um, We're still doing some stuff because uh, this weekend, uh, maybe even as you're watching it, this is our grand opening weekend, and we are going to be opening up this space uh, in a big way for the first time, and if you're watching this in the morning, you can come join us in person tonight. It's going to be a great Mother's Day service. Uh, Last night, we had Dante Bo here. My goodness, that was just unreal, like this place and the atmosphere, and the worship, and what God's doing in this city, like, it was incredible. You're going to be able to watch that later. Unfortunately, we couldn't live stream it, but it is going to be up in a couple of weekends so that you'll be able to check it out, but I'm so excited. It's our grand opening weekend. Can we thank God for that? Come on. So excited to see what he's going to do in this space, and uh, it happens to be Mother's Day weekend as well, which is a, a wonderful weekend where we love to celebrate moms, and I've got a message on my heart today. Uh, if I can share with you. This is a message that um, I think is very timely, and I hope that it helps you wherever you are at today and whatever God is doing in your life. Uh, You're not here on accident. I believe he has something he wants to speak to you today. I've called today's message, Doubters Welcome. Doubters Welcome. You know, doubt is a serious issue for people, it's, it's something that all of us probably at some point, one point or another, have struggled with. Doubting is very prevalent in our world and in our culture. And not just outside of church and faith, but inside. Two-thirds of all Christians say that at one point or another they have had doubts. Like, I think that this may mean like serious doubts. Or, or, or they've had moments of questioning. Is this all real? Is God real? Is my faith real? And the other one third who say that they haven't had doubts are lying. Because we all struggle with doubt at some point. In fact, the the most common struggle in the Bible is probably doubt. 
people having a hard time really believing what God has said and walking that out. And doubting, if you've ever experienced it, if you are experiencing it now, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It's something that we can all go through. And the Bible has a lot to say about it. I want us to look today at John chapter 20, which is kind of the quintessential passage about doubting in the entire Bible. In fact, the person who's most commonly associated with doubting is in this passage. In fact, if I say something before his name, you can probably guess doubting Thomas. Type it in the chat. Thomas. And I feel bad for Thomas because I think that he gets a little bit of a bad rap. I think that he actually um, is a pretty cool guy. And there's things about his life that are even admirable and that we would want to emulate. But we're going to see through Thomas's doubt how to deal with our doubt. And we're in John chapter 20, starting in verse 24. It says, now Thomas, one of the 12, called the twin. Thomas literally means twin in the original language, was not with them when Jesus came. So Jesus is resurrected from the dead. He's been visiting and making appearances to the disciples, but Thomas wasn't with them when that happened. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Catch that. It's important. Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put your hand or put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So Thomas is here not having had the same experience as the other disciples. All the rest of them have got to have these encounters with Jesus. And Thomas wasn't with them when that happened. And so as a result, Thomas's doubt continues to perpetuate. And he doesn't believe. Maybe you have been this person or maybe you have a friend who's like this where you have an encounter with God. Like you go to some church service or God really speaks to you in a, in a very powerful and personal way. Or, or you go out to like some conference and you have this moment with God and, and you're trying to tell people in your life like, I have had an encounter with God. He spoke to me. He's, he's changing me. He's doing this in my life. And then you have people who are like, well, that's great for you. But I wasn't there. I don't get it. I'm not going to jump on that bandwagon. I'm not going to believe unless I see it myself. And that's the situation Thomas is in. And sometimes we can get frustrated with that because we want other people to experience what we've experienced. But I suggest that with those people, we don't get perturbed, but we're patient. And that's how Jesus was with Thomas, which we'll see in just a second. Or maybe you are that person who you haven't had that encounter, you haven't had that experience, and you're like, well, I'm not going to see unless I believe. Listen, we're glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Doubters are welcome here. This isn't a church of people who have it all together. This isn't a church of people who have every answer to every question. This isn't a church full of people who don't have doubts. Like, come with your doubts. Come with your uncertainties. Come with your questions. Come with your skepticism. Like, like in some ways, I think that we actually should, uh, should elevate that in, a, in the sense that we're open to questions. We're open to people wrestling with the scripture, wrestling with who God is, wondering what the answers are to tough questions. Doubters are welcome here. And when Jesus shows up eventually and Thomas sees him, he doesn't like, you know, give Thomas a hard time. Like he, he does tell him like, hey, you've seen and you believe because you've seen, but blessed are those who haven't seen and yet have believed. But he still shows up. Thomas's doubt didn't stop Jesus from showing up. And your doubt isn't going to prevent Jesus from showing up in your life. C.S. Lewis 
one of the most brilliant Christian thinkers who's ever lived, he was an atheist and he refused to believe in God. And then after a while of researching and looking into faith and studying it from a philosophical, philosophical perspective with his brilliant mind, he came to the point where if he was going to be intellectually honest, he had to say that God was real and he came to faith in Jesus. He said that he came to faith kicking and screaming. Like he didn't want to. He, he didn't want to be a Christian. But he couldn't avoid the truth that he encountered. Lee Strobel, he's an author, now a, a very famous author and like Christian apologist. But at one point he was an atheist and his wife became a Christian. And because he had a background in journalism and in law, he decided to go out and disprove Christianity so he could tell his wife, this is so stupid, you got to quit believing this. And he interviewed the top Christian thinkers of the day. And he brought to him all of the arguments against the Christian faith. And as he was doing research with his journalism degree, writing all this stuff down to disprove his wife, he ended up in the process becoming a believer. So listen, doubters are welcome. Like Jesus says, come on with your doubt. Come on with your questions. I'm bigger than that. And I can meet you in the process. So Thomas, this isn't the first time, by the way, that, that he's put up a little bit of a stink when it comes to going with the flow and being on the same page as everybody else. You ever have somebody in your life like that? Like you all are excited about one thing, but they're like, well, I'm going to be the opposite. You got some Karens in your life? I, I, I know that I do. Um, the people who just kind of want to throw water onto a fire. Well, Thomas is a little bit like that. At least, maybe not in the sense of he's intentionally trying to be different, but he's owning up to the fact that he doesn't always see things the same way that everybody else does. So you look at John 14, 5. Jesus is saying, I go to prepare a place for you. And then Thomas, all the rest of the disciples are like, yeah, preparing a place. Like, that's God, great, Jesus, that's amazing. You know, like, I, I get that as a pastor all the time. People have no idea what I mean, no idea what I'm actually saying. But they're like, yeah, that's right, pastor, that's right. Yeah, you do that, Pastor. That's great. And so people are telling this to Jesus. Yeah, that's right. And then Thomas says, Lord, where you go, we do not know. And how can we unless you show us the way? You see, Thomas is the one who will say what everyone's thinking. And you need a couple Thomases in your crew. You need some people who are willing to go against the flow, who are willing to challenge and ask some questions who are willing to even make it a little bit uncomfortable. And Thomas was one of those people. So in this moment where he says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, unless I put my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. He's kind of living up to his personality. Doubting Thomas. And, and that kind of a person, I don't know which number on the Enneagram they would be, the challenger, whichever one that is. I can't remember. But that kind of a person... There's a lot of admirable qualities about that. Those kinds of people can be incredibly powerful leaders. Those kinds of people can be very influential because they're willing to stand up against things that are not right. Even if everybody else says they're right, they're going to go, this is not the truth and I can't live my life like this and I can't allow this to continue to go on. And so if you harness that natural personality that maybe goes against the grain and use it for good, there's a lot of amazing things that can come from that. And Thomas is one of those kinds of people. So Thomas, he says, I'm not going to believe. And then Jesus shows up. Now before we, you know, always, we, people are always just ragging on Thomas about his unbelief and about his doubt. But I think we should just take a moment and remember what was going on in Thomas's life at this point in time. Thomas had just watched the man that he had been following for years and given up everything in his life to be following. He watched this man who he thought was going to become the leader of the nation of Israel. They believed that this was the chosen one, the Messiah, who was going to overthrow the Roman government and bring Israel back to its rightful place and 
they thought the Messiah was going to be a military leader eventually. And Thomas watches this man, Jesus, get taken away, put on trial, and killed. Capital punishment, crucified. The death penalty. And the last image that Thomas has in his head of Jesus is dead on a cross. Have you ever had a moment in your life where something that you thought for sure was going to happen, something that you just believed down deep was going to happen, something that you had dreamed about, that you had planned for, that you had prepared for, something that you just put all of your weight onto, goes away. It doesn't go how you think it's going to go. Your dreams get crushed and you deal with disappointment. I think we've all had that at some point in our lives. And it's crushing. It can be debilitating. Disappointment can lead to doubt. You don't get the job. You don't get the promotion. The relationship doesn't work out. The finances don't come through. The, the bills don't get paid. The, the mortgage is now at the point where it's going to get taken away. Like the, the house is going to go back to the bank. Like you, you thought that these things were going to get solved. You thought that these things were going to change. You thought that these things were going to get worked out. And here you are standing at the death of your dream. That's the situation that Thomas is in. That's what he's dealing with. He's dealing with this incredible disappointment that, that he had spent his, the last three years of his life living for. Just go away. And so let's give Thomas a little bit of grace. Let's give Thomas a little bit of understanding and patience. Because he's dealing with an incredible amount of disappointment right now. Disappointment leads to doubt. And when we experience that disappointment, it, it leads to hurt. And if we don't lead, or sorry, if we don't deal with that hurt, it leads to hiding. Thomas's hurt led him to hiding. He isolated himself. He, he brought himself out of the equation. He said, I'm just going to disconnect from all these other disciples and Jesus followers. And maybe he was even scared because they're thinking, oh, they just crucified the guy that I was following. Maybe I'm going to get killed next. Some of the disciples ran away. Thomas might have been afraid for his life. Whatever the reason is, his hurt led him to hiding. And how many of us, that's the same thing that we do when we get disappointed with God or we get disappointed with people. Our knee-jerk reaction is to run away. Well, I'm not going back to church anymore. I'm not getting around other Christians anymore. I, I I just invested so much into this certain thing and it, and it didn't go the way that I thought and I got mistreated and the things that were supposed to happen didn't and I didn't get, and so I'm just, I'm just backing off. Most of the people that I've seen who leave church don't cause a huge stink on the way out. Most of the people that I see who leave church do so quietly and are just hurt. Or, or they are dealing with something that they feel like they can't bring to other people, and so their reaction is just to go and to hide. But here's the deal. The more we hide, the more we isolate ourselves, the more we remove ourselves, the bigger and the bigger our doubt becomes. You see, we're never going to get back to a place of faith we're never going to get back to a place of strength. We're never going to get back to a place of being healthy in hiding. It's like if we were to have a fire pit here and it was filled with charcoal. And I were to take a piece of the charcoal out of the fire pit and I were to put it somewhere over here on the ground. The charcoal would almost immediately lose its heat. You, you, you see, in order for the charcoal to get 
the heat going that it needs for that fire to really be roaring. It's got to be connected with the other pieces of charcoal. It's got to be in the fire pit. That's where the heat's at. That's where the strength at is at. That's where the fire is going to get roaring. When you get over here on your own, isolated, everything starts to dissipate. Your, your strength, your faith, your vibrancy for things of God, your, all that stuff over here, it's not going to thrive. It's only over here that you're going to be able to walk into everything that God has for you. You see, Thomas's doubt didn't go away when he went into hiding. See, belief only increases around other believers. Look back at these verses. It says in verse 26, eight days later, his disciples were inside again. And what's the difference this time? Thomas was with them. Thomas was with them. How Thomas got the encounter he needed with Jesus was by getting around other Christians. Was by getting around other people of like-minded faith. The experience that you need with Jesus, the encounter that you need with Jesus is going to happen around God's people. It's not going to happen on your own. It's not going to happen in your bedroom, most likely. It's going to happen being around other believers. That's where the heat gets stirred up. That's where the doubt starts to dissipate. That's where the belief starts to rise up. And so my encouragement to you today is very simple. When you're going through a hard time, when you're dealing with doubt, when you're uncertain about things in your faith, or you're going through a hard time, don't isolate yourself, but bring yourself back around. Listen, there's nobody who's going to judge you for having struggles with doubt. Thomas didn't get judged. Thomas got an encounter with Jesus. You are going to have an encounter with Jesus when you get back around God's people. And that's the kind of church that I want to be. I never want to be the church that somebody comes back after being gone for a while and the first thing we say to them when they walk into the door is, where have you been? I want us to be the kind of church that doesn't say, where have you been, but says, welcome back. Welcome home. Listen, it's never too late to come back to God. It's never too late to come back to church. And, and I think that in this season of getting to the other side or the beginning of the other side of this pandemic, starting to meet again and have services. And, and for a lot of us, it's like I've been telling other pastors and people that I talk to in ministry who are dealing with the same kinds of things that we're dealing with at Cross and Anchor. We're, we're starting to have services again. We're trying to get people back in the doors again and coming to church again. I tell them it's like we're getting back to earth from being in space for a year. And, and our body has to like readjust and we've got to get used to gravity and we've got to work out so our muscles work like they used to. Because for a lot of us, we've been by ourselves for the majority of the last year. If we haven't been by ourselves in terms of actually spending all of our time alone, we've been by ourselves when it comes to our faith and following God. Like we haven't been around other believers and, and we wonder why our faith is shrinking and, and why that that connection that we used to have with God isn't as strong, it isn't as vibrant. It's because, hello, you've got to have the other believers around you for that to grow. I guarantee you, just by being around, your life will change. Just by being around. And so I want to encourage us today, as we come to the other side of this pandemic, as, as we open the doors again to church, and as we continue to have services online, that we wouldn't isolate ourselves, but we would come back around. And that may look a little bit different for different people. Some people don't even live in Detroit, and we've got to find ways to connect with them wherever they're at. But for those of us who can, we should be coming back and being around other believers because there's nothing like being together in the same place to accelerate our faith. So I want to encourage you today. Um, this is... A really exciting time. Next weekend, this is our grand opening weekend. Next weekend we launch a brand new series called People. And 
it's a great opportunity to come back, be around God's people, but also invite people because this is a series that's asking the question, what does it mean to be human? And so much of our world and our city is trying to understand why they're here on earth, what their purpose is, what's the significance to life. And we're going to be talking about those things and answering those questions and saying that there is a deep meaning and a deep purpose and an amazing way to live life that God offers. And so I hope that you can join us for that. I hope you can be here in the house for that series. I would encourage you that series is going to be five weeks long. I would challenge you to be here for three out of those five weeks. Like just say out of those five weeks, I'm going to be here for three times and watch if just by being around three times in that five weeks, if God doesn't just do something in your life. And and maybe you're still watching online and that's how you're connected with Cross and Anchor and you kind of keep up from a distance, but you, you can't be here in person. That's so great. We still are so excited to have you with us and we're so glad we're gonna continue online services. We're not going anywhere with these, but we still want people to be able to gather in person and have an encounter with God. Thomas's doubt turned into a testimony, and yours can too. Before we close, I just want to tell you about what happened with Thomas after this moment. We kind of tend to take a freeze frame of somebody's worst moment in life and define their entire life by that moment. Like, like that happens actually all throughout the Bible, that happens in people's lives is that one moment, that one horrible thing that they did in the rest of their life, that's all that we remember them by. And Thomas is kind of like that, doubting Thomas. That's all we remember him for. But did you know that after this moment, after Thomas met Jesus, first of all, immediately he believed, like he got what he needed. God came into the room and showed up where he was at. God will give you what you need. Like if you have an honest doubt, if you're not sure about something, if you need him to meet you in a certain way, God will meet you there. And Thomas got that encounter with Jesus. But then after he did, he was the first person to take the gospel to Asia. He became a missionary, a church planter. And you can still go to the place in Asia today where it talks about where Thomas is buried because he took the gospel and gave up his life eventually. He became a martyr for the very faith that he doubted. I just want you to know today, it's never too late for a turnaround in your life. It's never too late for you to go from a person of doubt to a person of faith. Even if that doubt has been around your entire life, in one moment, God can meet you and change you and send you on an entirely different direction. Thomas is proof of that. That's Thomas's testimony. Not that he had a moment of doubt, but that after that moment of doubt, his best days And being used by God were ahead of him. So if you're Thomas today, ask God to meet you. God's here to give you what you need. Most of the questions that you'll have in life about faith and God, they're answered in the Bible. God speaks to us through his word. And if you're having a hard time really bringing faith into your life, just start reading the Bible. Even if you don't understand it, even if it doesn't make sense, just start reading one of the Gospels. And see if in those moments, if if God doesn't just show up and speak to you. We have what we need in this book to be able to come to faith and live a life of faith. And God will meet you there and give you what you need. Can I pray for us as we close today? Thanks so much for joining us, for being here online. We're just so grateful. Uh, Our church wouldn't be the same without you and we love you. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this story of Thomas and help us, God, to be people who are compassionate to those who doubt. We've all had doubts. Help us to be patient with those who doubt. Help us to not expect them to be further along than they are or expect them to come to the same place that we are. Help us to meet people where they're at. And God, for those who are doubting today, they can't get around the doubts that they have. I just pray that like you showed up with Thomas, that you would show up in their life. And that whatever doors maybe they've locked to keep you out, like had happened in this story, that you would just walk through those and show yourself to them. 
I just pray that you would take people today who are watching this from doubt to faith. And even if it's a journey, even if it's not today, even if it's weeks from now or months from now, that they would have an encounter with you that changes their lives. Thank you, God. Thank you. And if you're watching this today and you're a person who says, I, I want to come from doubt to faith or I'm a person of doubt who wants to have an encounter with Jesus. Well, listen, you can have that. I, I want you to just pray a simple prayer to God. And I want you to say this, dear God, I come to you as I am. My doubt, my disbelief and all. And I ask you to meet me here and change my life. God, would you fill me with faith to believe that you're my Savior and my Lord. God, I turn from my sin and I turn to you as my Savior today. I put my faith in you. Come into my life and change me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you're starting that journey of faith today, we want to encourage you. We've got a free Bible for you. We want to send that to you free of charge wherever you're at. And we hope that you'll continue to come along on this journey with us as we start this new series and as we investigate who Jesus is and what he can do in our lives. And wherever you're at on the faith journey, we're just so glad that you're with us today. We love you. God has great plans for you. Can't wait to see you next weekend. Moms, happy Mother's Day. If you still are watching this in the morning, come and join us at six o'clock tonight. My wife is gonna be giving a message. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Peace.